Hi, welcome to another video. So, I've tried to give you guys info on how to build some good front ends that look good, are unique, and whatnot. I made a video a while back about how you could use the Shad CN MCP server when it launched to get the context of different Shad CN libraries and allow your coder to build some cool stuff. I also demoed how you can use context 7 to get even more context, and so on. However, I think Shad CN has dropped one of the best updates yet, and it will really make building UIs pretty fast, even if you code by hand or you code with AI. So, I do know that a lot of people who don't fully understand coding watch my channel, so let me just give you a quick overview of Shad CN. What is it? Well, Shad CN is simply a component, or UI, library. You need a form, you can take one from Shad CN. You need a pricing page, you can take one from Shad CN. It's open source, and it's at like 100,000 stars now on GitHub, which is the first repo in history to do so. Anyway, basically, it's like a template of building blocks for your UI. It stays responsive, it's interactive, and it saves a lot of hassle that you'd have when building UIs. When you use Shad CN with AI coders, you also save quite a bit of tokens as well, because it can be like three lines of code, and you have a form, or something along those lines. All you have to do to get Shad CN components is that you just run a command, and the component becomes available in the component library. Then you can just reference it in your code as an element in one line, and use it. I have talked about how to use it in depth in the Shad CN Designer video. You can just search for it, and you should get there. There's the default Shad CN library, but there are also other providers who make components as well. Like one of those is Animate UI. I use it a lot as well. So, you get the point. They are simple building blocks for your app. But, when you get third-party building blocks, and some other company also gets the same building blocks, then they all converge and start to look basically the same, which is not very ideal, because you'd want to have your own style. You could have done this before by using something like V0 to build custom Shad CN components and then bringing that in, but it costs money and isn't very ideal in corporate scenarios as well. But Shad CN has dropped something that allows you to basically customize all components in your style. You could do this before as well, but it wasn't seamless. You'd have to maybe put in a primary color, or maybe change the component's code entirely, which wasn't very ideal. So, to do this, you head on over to the Shad CN site. Here, you'll notice a new option called Create. This takes you to a new builder-like interface. This is where you can set up your own style for your app. Here, you can see all the components and how they will look with your style. On the right, you have the style setup. Here, you can first select the preset, which has some preset styles for you to use. You can also set up the base component library between Radix and Base. I prefer Radix, but some prefer Base so you have the option available here. Then, you can set up the style. This is the overall look of how it will all come together. You can use Vega for the general look, Nova for a less padded look, Maya for borders and rounded corners, Lyra for boxy shapes, and Mira, which is a combination of Maya and Lyra, which makes it less padded but rounded as well. Then, there's the base color. All of them look the same to me, except gray, which looks kind of blue. Theme sets the primary color of your elements and the overall theme. So, purple will make the whole experience more purple-ish, while other colors will push it more in that direction. There's no custom color. I would have liked that, but unfortunately, that's not here. Then there's the icon library. Here, you can select the icon library between Lucid, Tabler, 
and huge icons. I prefer Lucid, but you can also choose between the other ones. We also got the font options. You can select between Inter, Noto Sans, Nunito Sans, and even JetBrains Mono, which is cool if you want to have a developer look. For Radius, you can select between the different options as well. You can also select the menu accent, and you also get a shuffle option, which randomizes each and everything we just configured and lets you keep randomizing until you get maybe the one that resonates the most with you. Once you think that you have the style you want, then you can hit this Create Project button. This is awesome, because now, to initialize a project that uses this, you just have to run this command, and it will do that. You can use Next.js, Tanstack Start, and Vite. Many people are using Tanstack these days, so it might be helpful. I'll move ahead with Next.js, as you don't need to hop through bugs when deploying. Tanstack and Vite are still not very deployable, unless you go through a pretty good amount of hoops. Anyway, now, let's get into our terminal and coder. I'm just going to go to the terminal, and I'll paste this command there, and it will run. Then take some time, put all the stuff together, and initialize the project. Now let's open it up in our coder of choice. I'm using Verdant here. I like it a lot these days, as I can, like, spin up multiple work trees and stuff like that. And you can, like, let it run multiple tasks in the background, even on multiple different projects and different work trees. It's quite cool. You can't really go back to something like Cursor after you've used this. Anyway, I'm going to open this up here, and now we have it here. Let me actually just go to the terminal and run it. So, you can see what it looks like. So, it shows some demo components for now. And you can see that this is the style we finalized everything on, which looks good. Now, let's just create a new workspace here. This makes a new branch clone of the project, and I can later merge it back to the main branch if I'm happy with the results. This way, I can make sure that nothing gets messed up, and I can revert back. I could have also just worked in the main repo, but I didn't do that because it's not a good habit to have. But now, let's ask Verdant and Opus to utilize it as well to make something new. I want to build a simple chat app with Vercel AI SDK. I'll specifically ask it to use the Shad CN libraries to build it out. Try not to write your own components. Spin it up quickly. Generally, you should use the plan mode first and build the plan out. I'm not going to do that yet. Now let's go ahead and send it over. So, it is now working on it. I'm doing it in the workspace, so I can actually also go ahead and create a new workspace. And then let me ask it to make me a to-do list Kanban app here as well. This will show you how it can use the same theme to build out different things. So, just send over the prompt here, and it will start working on it. I use Opus here, but you can use Gemini, Sonnet, etc. All of the models in Verdant are tested before they get integrated. So, most of them work well, but obviously Opus and Gemini are currently the better ones. Anyway, in a bit, both of these get done. So, I can just open the terminal here and get this running. And if I navigate here, then I have the chat app, and it works, which is great. And it used the same components and style as we had set up. Similarly, if I go to the To Do app, then I can run it here. And if I preview this, then you'll see that it also uses the same style, theme, and component styles. This is, like, actually awesome. You don't need to prompt your coder anymore to figure out the design, and some components work with the style while some don't. It is Shad CN, so it works with both light and dark themes, and it's just better. It is also very quick when you're coding with AI because it doesn't have to write the components, styles, etc., which makes it really, really cool. I really liked this, and I'll obviously use this a lot myself.
and I thought I'd give you guys a tutorial about how to use it for yourself. It's really very cool. Making a front end that is unique and responsive is really easy now, and I really like this. I believe you can also make some rules and ask it to always follow the shad CN components as well. You can do that in Verdant by configuring it there as well. You can also set up the shad CN MCP server for these components registry from different registries like the Animate UI library. And I believe that it will also use the same colors for that as well. Though, I haven't tested that yet. I'll be doing that later. If you've used it for different registries, then please let me know in the comments if it like registers the colors with those components or not. You can also maybe set up a shad cn sub agent and make it write custom components that follows the same aesthetics. I'll be giving different stuff a try and share if I find anything useful. Anyway, this is actually really good and solves a lot of pain points when you are spinning up new projects. That is majorly about it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.